Hello everyone and welcome to this live workshop. I'm really excited for Christine Owens to get into all of her tips and tricks on how to adapt a unit study to a wide range of ages. This is going to be a 15 minute workshop and then we will have time for questions at the end. So go ahead and pop your questions into the comments and I'll make sure that she sees them at the end. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and mute and hide myself so you can take the center stage. Okay. Awesome. Hi, my name is Christine Owens, and I'm the author of Relaxed Homeschooling and the A Year Poetry Tea Time series. And I'm also the founder of the home, the International Homeschooling Poetry Contest, which is going on this month in April. And I am super excited to share with you my experience with having children of a wide range I had my last child when my oldest was probably about nine years old. And so that was a wide range that we had to teach to. So I'm super excited to show you how I was able to teach all my children at the same time without having multiple curriculums. So what I'm going to show you today is three steps to be able to take a unit study and turn it into learning for your entire family so you don't have to go out and like, I know we, when I first started, I got my curriculum and I was super excited about it, but I cannot even imagine having, you know, preschool, elementary, middle school, and high school aged kids and trying to find a curriculum that fit them all that would kind of go along with each other. It's really one of the benefits of having our kids home to homeschool is that we actually get to learn together and not having to compartmentalize all the different ages. So with um, being able to take unit studies, you can actually learn together as a family. So some of the benefits, and I'm actually going to read some of these because I don't want to miss any of them. Okay. You are no longer separating your children into their different subjects and levels. You are no longer bound by a strict curriculum um, schedule. You are able to watch your children learn and grow with each other rather than juggling each child one-on-one. -on -one. Because I mean, sometimes that's just necessary, but having to do that all the time can become quite the doldrum, okay? You are able to dive deeper into single subjects, and the children are not only the students, but also um, the teachers, and I'll share a little bit about that, okay? Participating in union studies as a family, it motivates the different children to do their best work and to cheer each other on. And that's another wonderful benefit, having everybody working together. You don't have the same dynamic as in a public school because in a public school, you know, everybody's in their specific ages. Um, and it's almost a competition between grades where with everybody learning together, you're able to create a very different culture in your home where it's um, encouraging each other and helping each other out and your children are able to actually bond more together when they're learning subjects along with each other. Okay. They can also, um, you're able to customize the experience a lot more. Okay. So with that, I'm going to jump right into the first, the first step here, the first thing, and that is being able to take a unit study. So it all starts with a unit study, right? Because that's what we're all talking about. So I'm assuming if you are here, you understand what unit studies are. If not, it's the idea of doing a lot of deep learning upon a certain subject. So maybe, you know, it's learning about Thomas Jefferson and then all sorts of things about Thomas Jefferson, maybe his childhood, different places he's been, different jobs he's had, um, Lewis and Clark. There's all sorts of things that have to connect with Thomas Jefferson. <clears throat> so a lot of times, you know, if you want to learn all together, people might try to find different units and try to learn through all of them. But what I'm going to encourage you to do is pick one unit that is on a topic that you, your entire family would may enjoy, and then you're going to adjust it or adapt it to the different ages. And so I'm going to give you an example here. I'm going to go from easy, like youngest, and adapting it to going older, okay? So for instance... If you had a unit study on the primary colors, okay, it's something for little teeny kids, preschoolers learning what red, yellow, and blue are. Most people look at that and be like, well, that's well below what my children's learning level is. But 
if you look at it, and I always do this, you pick a unit and you're going to explore and you're just going to brainstorm anything you can possibly think of and put it on a paper. Okay. So of course it's the colors red, yellow, and blue. There's mixing colors. Where do these colors lay in the rainbow? Um, the color wheel, prisms, Isaac Newton, refraction, um, wavelengths. There's within the color wheel, there's like all these, there's color theory there. You can go into all sorts of things. So you just dump all your different ideas onto a piece of paper and then you expand upon that. And you'd be like, okay, well, how could each of these work with my children? Okay. So for instance, I'm going to say the color blue. So maybe rather than thinking, you know, as big as Isaac Newton and prisms and all that, maybe you're just like, okay, what can I do with the color blue? Okay. There's a book called Blueberries for Sal. Of course, blueberries are blue, right? So you can read blueberries for sale to your children. And this can be all your children. This doesn't have to, you know, you don't have to exclude your older children. But once you've done that, you could do some simple things for younger ones. You could go for a walk looking for the color blue. You could go blueberry picking. You can make a pie together. You can draw lots of different things that have to do with the color blue. Maybe you're going to practice writing some words of things that are the color blue, okay? Because now we're moving into like elementary school type age. Maybe you want your um, life skills to be learned by your older kids. So middle school, high school age, they could learn to bake a pie on their own. Um, your older ones could actually even either learn how to do it on their own or they can do it with the younger kids. So maybe you have even a tiny newborn and you're like, I don't have time to sit in the kitchen cooking with my kids. Well, then you have older children, have the older children help the younger children, or maybe the older children will learn how to do it and then do it again to reinforce what they learned and teach the younger kids. You can do blueberry whip pie. You could do blueberry soup. You could learn how to make a drink. There's all sorts of different things you can do. You could also within the, um, I mentioned like refraction, color waves. There's so many different things. So once you have your basic, then you think, okay, what is possibly related to this could, that my older, my oldest children can benefit from? So like learning about the different theories of Isaac Newton, you have, like I said, the color waves, like how do color waves interact and react to each other? There's, it could just goes on and on and on. I have another example here. Maybe you have something as simple as a book, okay? 10 apples up on top. I ju just before this started, I jotted down. I did my own brainstorm really quick on this, okay? So just think of what the different things you could do with these, okay? Practice cutting apples, picking apples, make apple pie, apple juice, apple sauce, apple crisp, mummify an apple. You can actually do an experiment where you put an apple, a peeled apple. You can carve it even to look like a mummy's face, and you put it inside this mixture of different powders and stuff, and it actually dries it out at a rapid rate, just like it would a mummy. So this could like, this book could lead into Egyptology and mummification. Um, the history of apples, Johnny Appleseed, the real story of Johnny Appleseed. Older kids could look into the process of making apple cider vinegar, testing the pH levels, um, the chemical makeup, you know, leading to the per periodic table. You could do um, with little kids again, um, how many apples can you actually stack on top of each other? You can cut an apple in half and make apple prints. You could collect the seeds. You can plant them. Um, older kids can do an experiment to see if they plant an apple seed in different types of soil. How would it grow? So there's so many things you can do. And it's the same with older. You could have a child that's taking an advanced biology course and they could be... Um, learning about the gazillion layer. I think there's like seven, eight or something layers to the, your skin, the human skin. So you can take that idea, the layers of the skin, and you can take the layers of the skin, maybe not every single layer. The middle schoolers might learn about the more, you know, not as detailed ones, maybe like four of the different layers, what their purpose is, draw a diagram, like a, a side I just forgot what it's called, like a side view of what the skin would look like, you know, what the follicles are for going even younger. They can still draw the same thing, but maybe they're going to learn about, you know, everybody also learns about how germs get into the skin, how the skin reacts. Um, 
there's so many, and there's so many little kids books on germs and um, the organs of the body. Of course, you know, skin is the largest organ of the body. So you can easily take a super advanced class and come up with things that will be able to be used for the younger children. You just don't teach it to the same, um, the same amount of detail. Okay. Step number two <clears throat> is presentations. <clears throat> Sorry. If you incorporate presentations into your unit study, um, family learning, then you will height, greatly heighten the amount of information the children learn and the retention. So what you do, say for instance, again, we do the Apple concept. Each kid might pick some sort of topic within that. And again, it doesn't have to be like they're learning about an apple. It could be mummification because that came up. It could be about um, how um, photosynthesis of trees, why apples have red skin. So the kids, this is where, you know, you might have some individual one-on-one -on -one time, but at least it's all incorporated into this big thing you guys are going to do, this presentation as a family. And so the younger kids are going to learn from the information the older kids are presenting on. The older kids probably will learn some things that the younger kids, and they will learn patience. Um, your kids will all have speaking skills that they're practicing, um, putting together a presentation. You can make it extra fun and have snacks, especially if you're doing apples. I mean, you can have some yummy apple snacks. You could do it as a Zoom and have family pipe in and be able to watch and comment on their presentations. And just the other day, my daughter was asking, she's like, when do we get to do presentations again? Because they really enjoy putting together a poster board with the things that they've learned. If you have older kids, they can work on PowerPoints. So again, you can have a broad range of ways that the children can participate. They will all be learning from each other and it will be a, a great experience as children also learn to be um, attentive listeners and to respect each other. There's so much that will come from the presentation part. And then my third point isn't actually about the creating of the unit, but it's to have realistic expectations. And my easiest way to illustrate this is say with copy work. So for instance, you might have a unit that you found and say your high schooler has um, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost as a poem that they're supposed to read or learn about. And so you decide, okay, well, I want you to write out you know, you're going to write out that poem every single day or maybe a stanza of it each day. But your younger children, to be expecting that a child who has yet to figure out how to write their entire alphabet to copy the entire thing down, that's not really realistic. You might pick one or two words out of it that are like important words that they could copyright or cop do copy work of. Then the next, you know, your next age group up might be a sentence. The next one up might be a stanza. Be realistic with your expectations. When they're doing your pr the presentations, your older children, you know, if this is the first time you've ever done presentations, it's going to take a few of them before you get to the point where you're like, because then you can give your older kids like little tips and you're like, hey, you know, you can improve by this, this, or this. And the littler ones will learn from that also. But the younger ones, it might be sharing a picture they drew of an apple. It might be... um Maybe my daughter, she did like a cow presentation on cows and her presentation was pretty much like telling us, you know, what cows ate, what they make and showing the picture that she drew. So if you have those realistic expectations, the children will be able to enjoy the unit study together as a group and their um they won't have a bad taste in their mouth every time he's like, oh, we're going to do presentations. It'll become a fun and exciting thing connected to whatever unit that you guys are doing. Okay, so to wrap it all up, what you're going to do is you pick a unit. You're going to brainstorm like crazy on it. You're going to adapt up or down, however you think you're going to need it. And you're going to have those realistic expectations. And just from doing that, you won't even need curriculum anymore because you can learn every single subject from any subject. And you're going to find that your children are getting so much more out of their learning. And other than that, 
Oh, I have a freebie for you guys. If you go to a year of poetry tea time dot com slash shop, there is a Peter Rabbit little rabbit trail. So it says Peter Rabbit LRT. And if you use the code Quest 2024, so it's capital Q and then U E S T. Um, and then 2024, you'll get that unit for free. That is made for like much younger. It's made for younger children, but I wanted to give it to you so that way you could try to take that and adapt it to go up for your older kids. Cause it talks about like carrots, of course, and like all sorts of fun things. So I hope that is everything. Let's see here. Do we have any questions? Yeah, we have a comment here. It's realistic expectations are so important. They appreciate you for touching on that. Yes. That was Tiffany Campbell. Hi, yeah. Tiffany. Thanks for watching. Okay, if you guys have any questions, be sure to share them in the comments, and I will make sure that Christine sees them. Uh, this video is going to be live for the next uh, three days, and then it is going in the HQ Club video library. If you guys don't know about the HQ Club, I will go ahead and drop a link in the comments. You guys should check it out. We have a space-themed unit study um, that you can use that has a bunch of different resources on different topics. And this is a great video on how to be able to expand some of the different resources that we have in there um, to be able to work for a bunch of different age ranges. So thank you so much, Christine, for no sharing problem. all that great information. Thank you for having me. And um, I hope that you guys join us for our next workshop um, that is going to be in just an hour or so. So I will go ahead and drop the link to the next video that we're going to be having today. Bye, everyone.